Hello, so like you said, my name is Eli. I haven't spoken here for, I think it's been three years since the last time I spoke, so it's good to see some familiar faces and some not so familiar ones, but thank you all for coming and uh, yeah, I hope you just have a good time and learn something interesting. So uh, I'm here today to talk about Neutrino. Uh, it's a project that I've been working on for mm, probably about the last six to eight months. Um, and so a little bit about me. Uh, like Nick said, I work at Mozilla. I'm part of the engineering operations team uh, that helps build Firefox and helps uh, distribute Firefox. Um, and we kind of been working on this tool called Neutrino that helps us solve some of the problems that we were having when we started uh, really wanting to ramp up uh, modern development workflows on some of our web projects. And as we started to do these things, we wanted to adopt modern chains using like Webpack and Babel and, and all sorts of various things. We ran into several problems that really kind of hampered our productivity when we worked on these things. Um, and some of the problems that you see people run into are things like developer angst, and I know it's kind of hard to see these tweets, but uh, things like wanting to rage and setting their computer on fire. Um, Sometimes these are things that can be synonymous with trying to set up Webpack or get a new project going. Um, these things lead to loss of productivity, um, also known as analysis paralysis. Um, you may have heard it called JavaScript fatigue, but it really describes this whole process of spending so much time trying to get ready to start writing an application that you spend a non-trivial uh, trivial amount of time you know, working to get the project set up before you even start writing application code. Um, things that we also ran into were quite a bit of boilerplate pro proliferation. And as, as people started to realize, hey, it's, it's a lot of work to try and set up like a new Webpack, pro Webpack project or um, any kind of, you know, new modern build chain. Um, you have to write all these different dependencies and get all this configuration set up and people said, I don't want to do that anymore, so let's create a boilerplate project. And that's good because it does reduce the amount of time that you need to take in order to get into the project, um, but it does come with some trade-offs on its own. Um, so what, what are some things that are wrong with using boilerplates? You know, what can you run into? Um, by definition, a boilerplate um, would not be reusable, or at least not easily reusable, when you go from one project to another project. Um, so essentially, boilerplate is just taking some kind of project template, and you create a new project based on that other one. It's essentially just a fancy form of copying, pasting code from one place into another. Um, and because of that, anytime you need to make changes, you have to do this on across every single project. You don't have one centralized place for you to make a change in one place that it would uh, follow through to all your other projects. Um, another thing that I've often seen in a lot of the community boilerplates that are out there right now is that uh, they're very hard to extend. You can't uh, make changes to them, or if you do want to make changes, like it's quite complicated to just get those to merge into something clean that you can just customize how you want to build the project. Um, and another thing is that in these boilerplate projects, you'll see them, they're really tightly coupled to the build process. And so by that I mean, if you use some kind of React boilerplate, and uh, you'll notice that a lot of times we have React in there and maybe have some Redux or something else, but you also have all of the build process and its configuration baked into there as well. Uh, so there's no way, it's really difficult to separate those out and the concerns of them kind of get conflated. Uh, how can I upgrade the dependencies of my build tool or my configuration without breaking all of this other stuff? Am I dependent on this boilerplate project or whatever dependency I'm using to update just to keep going on my project and keep it up to date? So yes, boilerplates do let you get started quickly, but in the long run you might start to experience some of these issues. And so I set out to try and fix this for some of our projects uh, internally at Mozilla. Um, and it originally started with a project uh, that was called Neutrino. And it, it did reasonably well. Um, it was very similar to Create React App. They both came out at about the same time. And they both had really similar goals. 
which was let's bundle React and React DOM and its dependencies and Webpack and get this baseline kind of boilerplate configuration together so you could install one dependency and start writing a React project. And it did successfully do that, just like Create React App does. But we started to run into troubles because we had bundled React in there. Um, we, people couldn't install React by themselves. Uh, they were dependent on Neo to make an update uh, in order to get the latest React. And so we were this middleman and it was, it, was, it was a mistake. People couldn't update the interdependencies because we kind of blocked that by being the dependency. Um, so by bundling all of these things together, um, trying to merge configurations across projects, it was, it was really hard. If you've ever seen a Webpack configuration, or at least a non-trivial one, if you want to make changes to it, not in the file itself, it can be really difficult to get into the nested structure of it and just to make a change on a one-by-one -one basis. Um, something that Create React App does to try and overcome this is not let you manage the configuration unless you decide to manage all of the configuration, which they call ejecting. Um, so when, they eject, you, uh, when you want to make a customization, they say, okay, we've been managing all this configuration for you so far. If you want to make a change, here's all the configuration, all, of the, depend all the dependencies. You get to manage all of these from here on out. And that's kind of cool, but now anytime there's updates up, uh, upstream, you know, you want to get, uh, you know, some later dependency or some best practice configuration that they might have, you're not going to get that by default. Um, and so everything's kind of got this trade-off. And it took us building something wrong, which was Neo, to figure out how to kind of do something right. And I think that's an important lesson to learn. Um, and that's, that's how Neutrino was born. So we abandoned the Neo project and took the, the lessons that we learned from that and kind of split up that project into two distinct pieces. One, how can we uh, provide a build tool that uses all of the great parts of Webpack's power and configuration, but still not make people tightly couple their applications into the deep configuration to it, still let them uh, basically drop in uh, like a preset. How can I say, I want to use Webpack to build a React app. I don't want to have to go through all the configuration mess. I just want to install a couple things and go. And that's where Neutrino came from. So Neutrino is this piece that sits in between Webpack and your app. And it combines the power of Webpack and it just it, it simplifies the configuration into these little chunks that we call presets and middleware. So when you're setting up a new project, you'll, you often want to glue together all of these different pieces. And Webpack, uh, you know, is, is really low level. It lets you do all of these things, uh, but you have to spend quite a bit of time uh, if you want to implement all of these different things and do it in a way that works well. It's either that or copy it from someone else that's done it, and we know that just copy pasting isn't gonna work well for long term. So the point of Neutrino is to make each of these pieces easy to just inject into your project but still have the mantra that if you want to use it, you don't need to do really much of anything in order to start using it. Um, so these are the ideals that we have when uh, doing work on Neutrino. We want to start any kind of JS, any kind of JavaScript project and do it with zero configuration. So if I'm installing some kind of preset, I want to be able to put that into my project and not have to configure it if I just want to use its same defaults. Um, avoiding boilerplate. We're not going to create files in your project or make you do a bunch of installation steps or uh, further configuration out of the box. You can do that stuff, but it does, it's not going to force you to do it out of the gate. Um, separate the concerns of the app versus the build. Um, this is things like we're not going to tell you uh, what Babel plugins you need to use in order to work with React and whatnot. We try to give you same minimal defaults, and then it's up to, the, up to you from there to figure out how you want to enhance your build in the future. Extensibility is a big one. Um, in order to use these presets, 
and then modify them in your project, there needs to be some way for you to be able to manipulate them without getting into like this messy object structure and be, uh, basically make it a little more deterministic. Where is the configuration going to lie? How can I modify it? How can I make sure that what I change is going to stick from project to project in, in a decent way? And lastly, encourage reuse and distribution. If you decide to uh, make some common configuration changes and you like to use that on all of your projects, you could publish that to NPM or put it on a GitHub repository and you can install that as your own preset anywhere into any other project and have it just work. So obviously the benefits to this would be to negate everything that was bad in the first place. So we want to increase productivity. Um, you can use best practices that are defined by the community inside these configurations or define your own based on your team's needs or your project's needs. Um, and then reduce direct dependencies. Um, make it so you don't have to know every single thing that you need to install. If, as long as you have this one preset, it gives you the dependencies you need to put together that one little chunk. So, I'd like to give some demos, if I don't go through an epic demo fail here, and show you Neutrino V5. Uh, and I say V5 just because V6 will be around the corner soon. Um, everybody can see that okay, I hope. Font size all right. Okay. So I've just got a couple empty, empty directories here. And I just want to, let's just create a simple React demo. So inside of here, I'll go ahead, I'm going to use Yarn. And I'll add React and React onto my project. Okay, so I've got React and React on. Now, in order to use like, a modern chain and I want to use all the goodness of the latest ES stuff, um, I'm going to add Neutrino to build my project. I'm going to use Neutrino, and I'm also going to bring along a preset I want to use to build my project. So Neutrino is the tool, and then presets and middleware are what I'm going to use to inform Neutrino how I want the project built. So I'm going to also install a Neutrino preset React. Sing the Jeopardy song. All right, so I guess we're all right. So Neutrino will set up uh, a few same defaults, expecting where it wants you to put your source code, and this is all overridable through configuration changes. But by default, it's going to look for everything to be um, inside of a uh, source directory in your project. Now, let's go ahead and open up the editor here. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to just put an index file inside of my source directory just to start writing some application code. So I'll go ahead and just import React. And let's do render from React DOM. And Neutrino will automatically give you some kind of mount point for you to put inside your React app. So let's go ahead and just re uh, render an H1. Type it tight. And I'm going to put this inside this root element that uh, Neutrino will set up in the page for me. OK, so I've got my super trivial React app. Now I want to build it and start it. So I'm going to open up my package JSON here just so I can add a couple of helper scripts to uh, let me build my project. So when I say yarn start or npm run start, um, I want to say, let's go ahead and use Neutrino. And I'm going to run the start command. And I want it to use my uh, preset that I also installed. So I've got that there. Let's go ahead and see if it'll start. Okay, it says my dev server is running on localhost 5000. 
initial build's uh, finishing. So if I open up this link, see there I have right out of the gate a React app, and I didn't have to go through any of the build steps in order to make it happen. So coming back here, I could also execute the build command. This will generate everything to a static directory that I could push uh, up to a static source. Um, but let's say I want to add hot reloading to my development workflow as well. So I'm going to go ahead and install React Hot Loader. So I'm going to bring that into my app. Okay, so I need to change my structure up here a little bit because React Hot Loader is going to want something for me to, like some kind of external file for me to use to reload my application. So I'm going to take my application code and I'm going to push it into a different file. So I'll create a new file here. I'll just call it app.js. And so we'll import React. Anybody else type form every time you want to type from? All right, so let's export default class app extends react.component. Obviously, I'm being super verbose here, but you get the idea. And we'll just say uh, hello here. You can't tell I love semicolons, so. <laughs> All right, so we got React Hot Loader in here. Let's go ahead and bring our app. Okay, so here I'm going to instead create a load function that I want to be called every time I get some kind of hot update inside my app. So I'm going to execute this function that will then do my render. All right, so I'm going to do my app container from react.loader. And then I'll render my app. Okay. So this is my load function, and obviously when I first load, I'm going to load up the app. But every time I get a hot update, this is all documented, of course. Uh, so every time we get a, an update from app, or basically every time app changes, we want to just call load here again. All right, let's see if everything starts up fine. this over here so we can kind of see some changes. All right, so all right, we've got our page over there. If I go into my app and just add some uh, exclamation points in here, you can see that it just updates on the fly. Just save that. Oh, I made a mistake, so I can just update. And you can see that that will then update over there. I didn't have to go through a bunch of work to set up the hot reloading. All of this is all done for you with the React preset that I got. Um, as far as making configuration changes to uh, the work that we've done, it, we've tried to make that process really simple to extend. Um, right now, um, in V5, you can uh, use your package JSON to configure how Neutrino works or uh, define your own override file right in your repository and use it. Um, and then in V6, we'll, we're standardizing on a common Neutrino uh, like RC file. Um, so for now, I'll just uh, add some to the package JSON so you can see how that works. So I'm just going to define Neutrino here and set some options. You can get a little bit of here, which is why we're moving it our way to it. So I'm just going to set my page title to be some epic React app. Okay, so this is a configuration change, so I need to restart what I have going on here. All right, that should be running. All right, you can see my page title changed to epic React app. I know that's hard to see from back there, but 
It was relatively simple to make that change. Okay, so I got React up and running in my project. Well, what if I want to go and add ESLint to my project? You know, am I going to have to go through a bunch of work to do that as well? Well, the answer is no. It should still be relatively simple. So I can come up here and add also. Uh, I'm going to add the Airbnb preset, uh, link preset. So I've got that installed now, so I can also use that. So I can continue to chain uh, you know, different presets here, but I can also just use a, a shorthand here to say, hey, for every command that uses Neutrino here, I want you to use all of these presets, all of this middleware. So we'll go ahead and say we want to use React, um, and we also want to use our uh, linting preset. All right, so we can shorten this command up here. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and start this up again. Missing semicolon. Well, that absolutely cannot do in my projects because I love semicolons. So, I'm going to go fix that as I close the file I was looking for. Have that semicolon back. And I have already switched back you can see my build is complete and there's no more linting errors. Going back there, if I then decide to take that semicolon out, you can see that I'm already getting the linting failure. So Airbnb linting, all as simple as just dropping a preset right in the project. Well, what if I want to do even more advanced configuration types uh, or overrides? You know, what if I want to have CSS modules? And by default, that's not enabled with my React preset. Um, well, I can just define a file to use as a preset, and then I can basically drop down into this lower level API to make those changes. So I'm going to create this file. I'm just going to call it Neutrino RC.js for fun because that's what we'll standardize on in the future. And if I export a function here, since this is being run in Node, I'll get access to this Neutrino object. And one of the really cool things about Neutrino is we also wrote uh, an abstraction layer over the Webpack configuration API. So you don't have to deal with plain <laughs> Webpack objects that can be really messy to work with. Um, it's called Webpack Chain, and it essentially allows you to just maintain like this, this state across any kind of changes you want to make using a chain API. So on top of the Neutrino API, we have this configuration object that is basically all of the configuration that has been built up up to the point of this middleware being executed. So if I want to add CSS modules, I could say uh, not module, not rule, and we have well-defined rules in all of our presets. So uh, the React preset comes with a style rule and in there it has a CSS loader, and I just want to change the options it's using and enable CSS modules. Okay, so that should be the gist of it. I need to also tell Neutrino to also use my custom stuff, which you won't have to do this in the future, but for V5 we have to. So I'm gonna tell it to use my file also as middleware and if I decide to just go create a file here, let's just say styles.css, and we'll create some random style like red. Okay, so we've got the style here. I'll go back to my app, and I'm going to import that red style. Up. 
Okay, so there, CSS modules just with a couple changes. So that is the gist of how easy it is just to override the configuration as well. You get a, a nice chaining API to be able to do that. So you can use just plain JavaScript objects in the current version um, or also lower level with this chaining API. Okay, well we've got React, we've got linting. What if I want to do some testing in my project? It's often a pain to get your test runner to use the exact same configuration that you use to build the rest of your app. And we take care of that with uh, Neutrino presets as well. So um, I'm just going to, ah, this is semicolon's got a lot of it. All right, so I'm gonna add uh, a just preset. This will allow me to test my project using Jest, uh, the test runner from Facebook. So I'll go ahead and add that I want to use Jest as well. All right. So Jest expects me, or at least this preset expects me to have a test directory. And I'll also create some kind of test. So how about we do like some kind of simple addition test? So in here, I'm going to create some silly thing to test, and I'll also create a file over here in my source code that I can import, and we'll just say that so the, all we're doing, we're going to test to make sure that x plus y works. All right, so back in my test file, I'll bring in assert. All right, so we can go ahead and write our test. Uh, let's describe addition. It should add. Does that sound reasonable? Let's also bring in add from our source. So let's say equal add 10 and 15 and make sure it's 25. Yes. All right. All right. Let's see if this works. Uh, also going to add a shorthand here just so I can say yarn test and still be able to run. So I can use the neutrino test command, and it will also use all the middleware that I have accumulated up to this point. Test pass. Okay. So this uses all the same configuration that I used to build my project, um, but just now using it to run my tests. So you can see there I got uh, modern source code building. I have linting. I have testing, and there's myriad other things from the community uh, that have been creating their own presets and middleware that do all sorts of other things like building re uh, Preact projects and adding TypeScript and you know whatever you need. If it doesn't exist, you can create it and publish it on NPM and then just, just uh, use that as well. And while I did use this for a React project, it's not limited to just web stuff as well. Um, you can use it for Node.js projects as well. Um, so there is a, uh, a Node.js preset um, that you can use to uh, basically Babel compile your node project and it'll just put it into a source directory or, or into a build directory and all of the stuff is overridable just like you saw with the React project as well. So like I said, there's lots of different things from the community. Uh, we've published several things that we use internally at Mozilla. Uh, we have several sites that are now uh, in production that are built using Neutrino. Um, so what's on the radar for V6? Um, we've been working hard on V6. Um, it was quite a community effort trying to get people involved and committing patches. Um, and I expect that to ship within the next week or two. Um, so with uh, V6, we'll have separate middleware that you can drop into your project that will get you set up with an introductory progressive web app. Uh, backed with offline support with service workers. So if you have a React project, you can also just say uh, install Neutrino middleware PWA and you're ready to go. 
Okay, you can override it as you need if you need the it to be more complex, but it'll at least give you a running start there. Um, unified extension API, so instead of having to figure out what to name your files and we try to guess uh, everywhere where you're looking for this file, we're going to standardize on a Neutrino RC file, so as long as you drop one of these into your project, we'll automatically include it as middleware and we're improving the configuration API even more to make it simpler uh, to do those overrides. Also custom build commands, you saw me use a few commands like Neutrino build and test, um, or you didn't see me use build, but uh, build will compile your project to static assets um, and start, starts a, obviously the development server, um, but also the ability for any middleware to register its own command to Neutrino that anyone else can then go and invoke. So for instance, if I want to say Neutrino lint, I could add a special command into my lint middleware that will define how that works. So anybody can use any middleware that anybody else has defined and use it to execute some kind of action based on just building their project. Um, and then better asset caching. So we, we, we always want to include whatever best practices that we find from the community into the middleware that we're shipping out. And so uh, we're getting better caching, trying to build faster and produce smaller bundles. Um, so if you want, We'd love to have you get involved. We're at, I think, 1550 stars on GitHub right now, so it's slowly climbing, uh, but it's been pretty good so far. And we've got about 90 people in Slack right now that have, I don't know, weekly conversations about all sorts of things Neutrino related. So if you need support, or if you want to get involved, you want to write code, you want to write docs, we would be happy to have you contribute. So extensive documentation, it's pretty good. Uh, Neutrino.js.org. Um, also visit the GitHub repository, Mozilla Neutrino slash Neutrino Dev, and thank you. So that ends like the official presentation part, but uh, right now if there's anyone that has any like questions, I can open it up for Q&A for a few minutes and we can discuss some things. Uh, let's I have a question yeah. on. Um, when you added the, the lint command in, yes. is there a way to, I know when I have my ESLint RC, then my IDE will give me like the visual red cues that, you know. Correct. I have the opposite of you, I, I use standard, so it'll say, oh, you put a semicolon in there. Yes, yes, so is there a standard. Is there a way to, no, to do that? So I'll answer two things. Uh, first, there is a standard preset, so you can drop that into your project right now. Um, and. Using the Neutrino API, and this is documented on the Lint middleware on the site, is how you can create uh, an eslintrc.js file in your project, and you can just tell it, uh, you can require the Neutrino API, have it use your middleware, and then just return your eslint configuration so other tools can consume it, so yes. And in fact, um, if you look at the, you know what, I probably, Oh, I don't know if I really want to switch branches. Uh, eh, let's just go to the repo. I'm scared to change my branches over there. <laughs> Nobody look, I'm using Chrome. <laughs> Okay, so you can see here in our repository we have a .eslintrc.js. We, I know it really sucks to see here, but we in Neutrino pull in the Neutrino API, require the Airbnb preset from the repository, override it with our own configuration, and just export this function that just returns all of the ESLint configurations. So ESLint can consume, directly consume this file. So you can share that information as well. So long, long answer, yes. Okay. Question? Yeah. yeah. Um, so these presets, are they like equivalent to like Webpack loaders? So like usually in my project, I would need like an image loader and a 
CSS preprocessor and things like that. Is that like different That's, presets or yes. are those like happy like this Airbnb? Yes. So for example, just the, the, the ESLint or how do these how are these presets sort of organized? So we we don't use Webpack configuration directly because the sharing that sharing a common configuration object across all these different middleware and presets and then allowing other people to manipulate this from everywhere is really cumbersome. Like it, you can't predict where things in the configuration will lie because there's arrays and then you don't know how things are named. Some things are just not uniquely identifiable, so it's really tough. So we use Webpack Chain, um, which is, um, I have this here, basically gives you a, a chaining API to manipulate a base uh, con uh, Webpack configuration. So each of the middleware then will get this single configuration object that you can then manipulate to add whatever you want. So for example, there's you can see there's examples here of like here's so how I could add ESLint. Just like chaining onto here and Correct. returns that that you can chain onto yourself if you don't have exactly. Set. So like like your SAS preload. Yep. So if you look at our middleware for loading images, this is inside of our web preset and our React presets. Um, we export a function. This is basically just Neutrino middleware. We have configuration. Okay, we have some defaults, and so then I create a rule for loading SVGs, and we have rules for loading images and icon files. So, if somebody wants to basically glue together their own project of how it works, and maybe they don't want something as high level as everything we've dictated for the baseline React or our baseline web preset. If they don't want all the nuts and bolts and they just want to glue together a few pieces, you can take this middleware and say, hey, they've got some good same defaults for how to load images. You can just require and use this middleware and that's done. But if you want to change this, all of the options that any of the middleware uses are overridable from anywhere. So it can be, it can be done. So if you, if you want to use this as a baseline and then just tweak it a little bit, that's totally possible and the API is good. Any other questions? Okay, Matt. So this looks super sweet if I'm starting a new project. What's the, I guess I should preface, would you recommend if I have a giant Webpack goal conglomeration that's kind of glued together to swap it with this? And if so, what's the best way to get started? So I want to say if you're going to try and re, uh, convert like a massive configuration, you're going to have a bad time. Okay. Um, not because it can't be done, but just because you're going to go through all the pain of how, I, how you originally set up Webpack, you're going to have to try and translate that into your own Neutrino middleware. So I've done it. Um, it's not the most fun, but it can be done. And it's probably the situation you're going to be in whenever you're switching build tools no matter what. So the good part of this is it's Webpack 2 only. Um, so like if you have some legacy one pack one stuff, you're kind of out of luck there unless you do the translation work. But uh, Webpack 2 stuff, um, I have seen some people that have done some work as far as like uh, mod or transforming Webpack configurations into something usable by this. Um, you might also be able to use code mods or something to help you transform it as well. Um, something that's part of Webpack Chain is every individual chain that you go into exposes this method uh, called merge. Um, and it's not a one-to-one -one Webpack configuration. It kind of follows the same chain schema that we use for Webpack Chain. Uh, if I go to the bottom here. Um, so, but it should give you an idea of how you can map something into, uh, from Webpack into here. So um, you can see things like Webpack plugins or Webpack entries or dev server or performance, any of those things. You can see that, okay, if I've got those in my Webpack configuration, I can at least see how I need to structure them so I can just say, I've got this object, 
just merge it directly into Webpack Chain. So Webpack Chain will take an object structure and it will put it into the backing store so then you can then chain off of that using all of the nice APIs from that point forward. So that, that may be the easiest route is to just transform the object before you pass it into Neutrino and therefore Webpack Chain. Can you do aliasing through Webpack yep. Chain? Absolutely. Um, yeah, use it in our projects. Question? Yeah, so you mentioned something earlier, I think, about having more than one project, and it sounded like you had a change in one you wanted to propagate, propagate to the others. Yeah. Can you yeah. explain that or demonstrate or whatever? Um, try and demonstrate by example. Um, so on some of our projects at Mozilla, we use uh, this preset called Mo uh, Neutrino Preset Mozilla RP Web. Uh, we used to be in part of this uh, release and productivity team and that kind of change, so the names are horrible, but um, we use it. Um, and so when we had Neutrino V5, we said, okay, we've got all these sites that are using Neutrino. We want them to all share the same configuration, so we put it inside this repository. It's published on NPM, so the projects can all require it. But you can see I'm just exporting more middleware that says, okay, for all of our projects, let's use Airbnb, and here's all the lint settings I want you to use. Um, use React, um, disable nodes buffer, and use our own Babel compilation options. And the API for this is getting even better in Neutrino v6. So um, some of the object stuff scares you, we're planning on fixing that in v6 as well. So yes, this repository, Everything you want to distribute is middleware. So you can either, you can just export a function from whatever repository or package, you install it, and you use it just like middleware. So you can make these changes in one single project, like on a project by project basis, or if you find that you're doing the same things across many projects, bring those together, put them in their own package on NPM, and then use those in all your subsequent projects. I think there's another question. No? Okay. Again, my name's Eli. If you have any questions, I invite you to check out our Slack or visit the GitHub repository. Um, we're always looking for new people to help, and we hope to see you try it. So, thank you.